In the last video, we started to implement our uh, our own MATLAB code for solving a linear system. We used this um, chicken dog example, this farm problem, as an example, as a motivating example to to to, uh, to solve linear systems. Basically, it's, uh, and we 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 wrote a script. Right? Let's um, let's open that script. It's called matrix inf. Dot m right so. and inside of this particular script we were trying to um, we're trying to solve a linear system right we we have an a matrix has um, so this a matrix times the x vector in our chicken farm a chicken dog example it's just uh, the number of chicken and the number of dogs and the number of chickens right that's the x matrix that's the x vector right so this a matrix multiply with that a vector is supposed to be equal to a y vector which has two numbers right uh, which is the total number of heads and the total number of feet uh, the code is, is different because I changed something to it I I, I was experimenting with something right? so that's the we, we start with the arbitrary guess a assumed number of dogs and the number of chickens right to assume the numbers right and then uh, we decide how many iterations we want to sort of run right for this particular steep decision algorithm and then inside of the steep decision algorithm we were basically doing this kind of matrix multiplication right to compute a predicted number of heads and predicted number of uh, feet by using this assumed x right and then we compute the difference between the predicted observation with the actual observation right and then we compute the so-called gradient right which is the transpose of the matrix times the error vector right and then we compute a modified x right the assumed value is not so good so we make change of it by by, by using this uh, learning rate LR times the gradient right that's basically what's what what, what exactly we're doing right and then we were trying to actually visualize this um, Steepest DZ and calculation algorithm by 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 plotting the plotting the path of x the evolution of x which is stored in this x x vector uh, x x matrix on the background of the error contours right so we were we're making a contour and the error l two is sort of the length of the error vector that's plotted in the background as 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 a function of the assumed Number of um, dogs and the assumed number of chickens. Right? So, so we're plotting the, the the path, which is a line, the magenta line, and then on t on, on top of this kind of a contour background, which indicates the 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 error of the prediction. Right? And uh, what we were what we found is that what the steepest decision actually the steepest decision algorithm was actually doing was that it's actually following a path that's always Perpendicular to the contour lines of the of the of the of the error, right? So so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna follow a path that's always gonna be perpendicular to the local contour lines of this error, right? So it's gonna move towards a direction that's gonna reduce the error uh, in the fastest way, in the in the in the in the in the, in the maximal way, right? <coughs> So that's what we have found by using this farm example, right? But now let's let's try to actually use this particular steep decision algorithm that we have written so far uh, to to solve other kinds of uh, linear systems, right? It doesn't have to be a farm problem; it can be any kind of problem. It doesn't really matter. The the thing is that, that we're gonna we're gonna start we're we're gonna the next problem we're gonna try to solve is the uh, is a decoding problem, right? When we when we were trying to solve When we were talking about a matrix multiplication, we looked at this particular encoding problem, right? So, so that's twenty-six letters in the alphabet, and then we assign each letter in the alphabet a unique number that goes from like one to like twenty-six or something, right? It doesn't really have to be a sequential number that goes from one to twenty-six. It can be any sequence of numbers that's not duplicated, that any non any unique 
any sequence of unique numbers, right? Basically, that's that's what this um, what this thing is actually doing. And then we can just map those characters, those those letters, to this unique sequence of numbers, right? And then any kind of a message that we want to send, so for example, Bila Coca, right? It's a wildcat. Right? We can we can convert that, we can convert that sequence of text, sequence of letters, into a sequence of numbers, right? And if we organize the sequence of numbers into like a three, three, three numbers per row, then this Bila Coca ignore the wild space in between. Then it's nine characters, right? So nine letters. Nine letters can be organized into a three by three matrix, right? And then we try to encode this particular matrix, basically. How do we actually encode it? We encode it by multiplying this, this, uh, this, this matrix A with another matrix C, right? That's two zero one one zero one zero one zero. You can pick any non-singular matrix, right? as long as this matrix actually has an inverse, so that the receiver of your encode, encrypted message you can decode it by using the inverse of C. Then that's fine, right? It, it can it can be an arbitrary non-singular matrix. Only you and only the sender and the receiver knows about this particular matrix, and no one else knows about this matrix. Uh, and then the encoding message is what? The encoding message is C times A, right? So so Z equals to C times A, right? And then Z matrix, which looks like that, that's the encoding message. And this encoding message is going to be transmitted from the sender to the receiver, right? So 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 this encryption process is actually a matrix matrix multiplication. And we looked at how to do this kind of matrix matrix multiplication by by writing our own uh, MATLAB code, which involves actually a nested loop, a, a triply nested loop, right? But now let's let's think about uh, the receiver side. The receiver side receives Z, which is this number, or which which is this matrix, right? But it, the receiver doesn't really know what A actually is, right? The receiver knows Z. That's what's actually being transmitted from the sender to the receiver. That's the encoding message, and the receiver also knows C. Right. That's the that's the piece of information that's shared by the sender and the receiver. Right. So so the receiver knows Z and C, and the, in order to actually decode the message, on the receiver side, you essentially have to the receiver essentially has to solve a linear system. Right. It knows Z. It knows. C it has to solve for A, right? And then later on we're gonna so look at some other more complicated examples, right? But 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 we're gonna look at this particular decoding problem as the first uh, problem that we're gonna try to solve by using a function that we can extract from this uh, farm problem, right? And let's let's call our function first. Let's create a function, right? It's a function. <coughs> And then the name of my function is called my uh, mat no my lin linear system lin solve right <laughs> that's my linear system solver right that's gonna be the name of my function and then what's gonna be my input right what's gonna be my input let's 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 go back to look at the, our code basically the the entire algorithm is encapsulated in this particular loop right. So what's actually needed inside of this particular loop? We sort of need an A matrix, right? That's the matrix that we're gonna need. We're gonna need an A, a matrix, right? We're gonna need an actual observation, right? We're gonna need an actual observation. Why? Right. And then, and then, what else would we need? We also need the learning rate, right? The learning rate. And then what else do we need? We also need the number of iterations, right? The number of iterations. Um, oh, I, what I did, I did wrong. I control C, so for copy, right? So control V for it. Okay? Why it's not working? But anyway, ni, that's the number of iterations that also can be specified, right? Later on, later on, when, 
after we have talked about the while loop, we can sort of get rid of the number of iterations. We'll let the algorithm itself to choose how many iterations it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna do, it's gonna carry out, right? And then what else do we need, right? What else do we need? So, so, so here we have. Um, when we were solving the farm problem, we we're providing a initial guest value for for x, right? For what's actually the initial guest value, and then throughout the loop, it actually keeps iterating and keeps modifying this particular this particular uh, vector, right? Um, but it's got nothing. It's got no. It doesn't really dependent upon the initial guess, right? So so we try the different values as the initial guess, and they all converge to the eventual correct solution, right? So it doesn't really dependent. It doesn't really depend upon which which initial value that 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 we can actually uh, we 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 actually need. We we actually put into it, right? So 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 we don't really have to actually specify it. A initial value for x, right? So that's why we we, we don't really need x as the input, right? But we can actually put x as the output. Why? Because inside of the loop, you keep modifying the x, right? It's uh, the the final solution is actually the the x vector that's coming out of this uh, loop, right? So after this loop has finished, the x is gonna be the correct solution, right? So x is actually the, the the return value. That's the output, right? So so now let's uh, let's put x into the output, right? And then what's going to be the dimension of x, right? What's going to be the dimension of the x? Don't forget, we have to do a matrix multiplication between a and x, right? We have to do this matrix multiplication with a and x. So the number, if 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 a is um, r by c, so 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 if so if the matrix A is R by C, right, R rows and C columns, then what's going to be the, the the number of columns for, for X, right? The number of columns has to be, for X must be, the number of rows, I mean, the number of rows for X must be C. So X must be C by 1, right? Do you see why? Because the inner dimension of the matrix vector multiplication must match. Matrix vector multiplication is just a special case of matrix matrix multiplication. So the inner dimension must match. They must be identical. So if A is R row C column, then X must be C row one column because X is the vector, right? So 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 the dimension of the X can be actually computed, right? So 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 let's say R C equals to size of A. Then x must be let's just initialize it. So it must be zero one column, right? And then we are initializing it to all zeros, right? That's gonna be our initial guess for the x. It's all zeros. The value of uh, x are all zeros, right? The row number is not really useful. We can just uh, use a wiggle to replace it, right? And then let's look at the, what's gonna be the uh, what's going to be the the, the 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 code that we can actually copy over? It's uh, it's pretty much just this particular loop. Let's copy over this particular loop. Let's copy it, and then let's save it. Uh, paste, paste, paste. Yeah, let's paste. Well, right. so here I don't really have to make the iteration index i i goes from two to n i plus one anymore because um, the reason that I wrote this line of code is because I want to store the x value, the solution value after each iteration into this x x matrix, right? But here we don't really have to store the the, the all the intermediate values of all the intermediate uh, solutions of x, right? So, so here, if that's the case, all we have to do is to actually change the range of the iteration from back from to to, to one to n i. Right? Uh, yeah, and then the x will be our only output, right? So x subtract the learning rate comes from that, and then we can just save it. 
let's just say it bindings of right um yeah and then let's try to actually use this um, use this particular function to uh, to solve our problem right to solve our problem um, but but before we actually solve our encoding decoding problem let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's change it. let me let me change the code back uh, so the a and y let's just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes when we created this link so function um, we don't really need this we don't really need this line we don't really need this line right and then yeah that's pretty much enough hold down the control key and press enter to just execute this particular section and then that's supposed to give us a solution 1929 right 19 dogs 29 chickens but now let's replace this particular loop uh, with uh, with a with a with a with a call with a call to the link so function or uh, my link so function right so x equals to my link solve uh, a uh, y right a o r a n i right and I don't really need this line also right don't really need this one. And then let me just hold down the control key and press enter. And let me see if X is still the correct solution. Yeah, X is still the correct solution. It's still, still 1929. Right. So that means that our function is uh, actually correct because it's giving us the correct solution for this farm problem. Right. And now let's try to solve our encoding decoding problem. Right. Uh, so we got this function now. Let's try to use this function in a inside of a script inside of a script and uh, let's create a new script and uh, uh, we're gonna solve the decoding problem De decryption 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 problem right. uh, let's 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 save the script uh, let's let's call it uh, linear system examples right. that's the name of our script and now let's let's try to define our problem now let's try to define our problem now so on the decoder on the receiver side on the receiver side what's actually the information that we know right what's on the receiver side on the receiver side it knows C right you know C, the receiver knows C. So C equals to uh, what's going to be the matrix, right? What's going to be the matrix? Uh, it's a 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then what's the last one? 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So the receiver knows the C matrix, right? And then the receiver also knows the transmitted message, the encrypted message, right? So 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 the encrypted message is what? Let me see what's actually the encrypted message. It's a it's a 191914. Uh, uh 19 1914. And then uh, 12, 15, 11, right? 12, 15, 11. Uh, 12, 12, 15, 11. And then 8, 11, 6. 8, 11, 6. Uh, 8, 11, 6. Right. So that's, so that's the encrypted, uh, encrypted message. And that's the C matrix, right? And now we have to solve for A, basically. We have to solve for A, right? We have to solve for A. So, 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 for our linear system solver, we know how to actually solve a matrix multiplied with a vector equals to another vector, right? That's the linear system that we are talking about, right? But here it's a C, that's a matrix, right? But it's multiplying with A, 
and it's the entire A that we don't know, right? But we know the entire of Z, right? So we know the three columns of Z, right? And we want to solve for the three columns of A, right? So if you treat each of the column of A as the unknown variable, unknown vector x, and treat the corresponding column of the encrypted message z as a y vector, in our, as, as in our farm example, then we can solve for, for, for the x vector that's inside of the A, right? So, so what we have to do is to actually apply our linear algebra, so linear system solver, to each of the columns of z and A and one column at a time, right? So the first thing we're going to try to find out is the number of columns of Z and A, right? So, so again, we don't care about the row number. All we care about is the, so, so let's call it NC, right? NC, number of columns. The size of Z, right? So the size of, the column number of Z matrix is the same as the column number of, um, of the A matrix, right? And then we can do a loop so IC goes from 1 to NC, right? And inside of this, inside of this, uh, inside of this um, loop, we can call our linear system solver, my lin solve, right? And then we can supply, we can supply the A matrix, uh, the, the, so, so in our lin solver, the, the, the first input is supposed to be the matrix that we know. Right, and in our linear in our decoding problem, the matrix that we know is actually C matrix, right? So 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 you can sort of see. So for the mathematical representation of the whole problem, it's C and A, right? So C is something that C is the matrix that we know, and A is the unknown variable, right? So as we translate it to MATLAB, C becomes this A matrix that we know about. Right, and then this Y is actually correspond to each of the columns inside of the Z matrix, right? And then the solution X actually corresponds to each of the columns in A, right? So, so, so when you when when we actually map the mathematical problem to a specific program, in our head we have to sort of do this kind of conversion. What this thing actually is corresponding to, right? Because what I was saying that. When we are talking about abstractions, right? When we talk about ab abstractions, it's kind of a, it's kind of a important to realize that this particular function is actually detached from the actual application, right? The function is an abstract abstract implementation of a particular algorithm, right? It's a kind of detached from the actual problem that we are actually trying to solve, right? And in this kind of a, the actual problem is described using those characters. Those are letters, right? Those symbols, right? And we have to actually map those symbols that's describing the actual problem to the variables that's used for defining the function, right? And there's a, this kind of a mapping that we have to do in our head in order to actually use this kind of abstract function correctly, right? So, so, so the first input is going to be C, right? That's that's um, that's the that's the matrix that we know. And then the y vector is going to be the IC's column of the Z matrix, right? So the IC's column of the Z matrix is actually a vector, right? It's a, it's a, just a one column. It's a vector. It's a column vector, right? And then and then the next input is what? The next thing, but the next input is the learning rate. Let's just give it some uh, small number, 0 0.01, right? You 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 can try to use the farm example to explore the effect of the learning rate. If you make the learning rate very small or make the learning rate very large, what's gonna be the what's gonna be the effect of it, right? You can you can you, you can you can experiment it. You can experiment with it with it by yourself. You, you and you'll see very different uh, results actually. If you make the learning rate very big, it may not converge, right? The final result may not converge. It's gonna jump back and forth across the valley that comes in. Um, so, so usually you have to sort of choose a quite small learning rate, and then the final input is what it's a it's a it's a number of iterations. Let's just give it like a ten thousand or something, right? some some very large number. And then and then this uh, the output is supposed to be a vec uh, supposed to be a column vector. That's the x right. But this x 
is gonna be is gonna be one one column in the A matrix, and the column index is supposed to be I Z, right? So 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 let's define our A matrix, and we are gonna initialize it to the size of Z, right? Um, and then and then and then we can we can just uh, IC's column is going to equal to the solution, right? The solution of the binding solve. And and our code is done. Our code is done, right? And uh, yeah, let's let's give it a run and see if we are going to get the right result. Right, let's look at A. So seven eight seven four three eight eleven six five eleven eight. Right, is that the is that the correct result? Seven four three eight eleven six. Right, and then eight eleven six. The second row is eight eleven six, and then the last row is five eleven eight five eleven eight. So so we have. We have uh, solved this particular problem right? by using this um, by using our own uh, linear system solver, right? and uh, it's actually giving us the correct solution. Right? So again, abstraction. Right. So so this algorithm or this function was uh, constructed by solving the farm problem, right? But now we are using the same function to solve the decryption problem. Right, it's completely unrelated problems, but nevertheless, we can use the same matter function to solve them. Right, it's a, it's a, they are completely unrelated, but nevertheless, we can, we can use it to solve the problem, the underlying linear system problem. Right. So, so that's the decryption problem, right? That's the decryption problem. And. The, this kind of linear system problem, or the solution of linear system problem, is almost ubiquitous, almost everywhere in in, in, in every discipline of science and engineering. So, 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 so for 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 people who are trying to actually make a career in in science or engineering, how to solve linear systems is uh, something that's kind of very very useful, right? It's a very very useful thing. So so here we are seeing how to actually solve a decryption problem, right? Using a, by by solving the linear systems. And now let's let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Let me uh, let me switch to a different PowerPoint slide. Um, it's called linear system. Uh, uh, yeah, let me look at this one. Yeah, linear system examples. Right. Let's look at another example that involves solving a linear system. Right. So again, this is uh, so so the three examples that we're going to look at. Um, Either in this video or in the next video, are gonna be from our textbook, right? The the, the textbooks that we have been using so far, right? So this is the example two point twenty one. This is example two point twenty two, and then two point twenty three. It's three examples, right? All of them are coming from the textbook that we have been using. Right? But now let's look at the let's look at this, this particular problem. It's called temperatures in a slab, right? So there's a thing square metal plate and it has a uniform temperature of 80 degrees Celsius on the two opposite edges a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius on the third edge and a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius on the remaining edge right so A mathematical procedure to approximate the temperature at six uniformly spaced interior points results in the following equations. So it looks like the description of the problem is not as clear as uh, as uh, as uh, as, uh, as what I would like to I would like it to be right. So so a very thin square metal plate. So so how many edges it's got right? It's um, uh, on two opposite edges, a temperature of, on the third edge, and then a temperature of sixty on the remaining edge, right? So uh, two opposite edges, that's like four edges, right? Four edges, two opposite edges, that two edges, 
a third edge, th three edges, and then four edge, fourth edge, right? Uh, so 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 the temperature on the four different edges are the are the values that we know, right? We know the temperature on the four different edges, and then what we are trying to actually obtain is to actually get the six at, get the temperature at six uniformly spaced interior points. Right, but it's not exactly clear where those points are located in, in the interior. It uh, just says that six uniformly spaced interior points. So uh, you've got six points that's kind of uniformly spaced inside of this uh, square metal plate. Um, and then we need to actually solve for this, for the temperature. But the important thing is that it's actually telling us these set of equations. So T1, T2 up to like T6 are the temperatures at those uh, six interior points, right? That's the, that's the thing that we need to solve. That's the x vector. The x vector has like six unknown variables inside of it. T1 to T6, that's six values. That's the that's the unknown variable that we need to solve. Right? And then uh, the temperature, that's the y vector, right? Everything that's on the right hand side, that's the y vector 280, 140, 140, 80, then 200, right? Um, it's kind of a, it's, a, it's not exactly obvious why you have 200 and uh, 140, right? So 80 appears here, but uh, but it's not it's not sort of so clear about why you have eight, uh, why you have a uh, one two hundred and uh, one forty right. All you know is like one hundred twenty, but uh, but uh, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much to us, right? Because uh, the mathematical procedure for actually coming up with these uh, six equations uh, must have been derived by some other people in previous studies. So all we are all we are concerned about is how to actually solve this system of equations and then try to come up with the correct solution right? and then and then how to actually convert this kind of a linear system into matrix vector multiplication right? so the vector is looks like that that's the x vector that we need to solve the y vector is also quite obvious right that's 280 all the numbers are given right so y vector is known x vector is unknown right and then what's going to be the matrix, right? What's going to be the matrix, right? So, so the matrix is going to look like that, right? So it's got some numbers, right? It's supposed to be six by six matrix. It's supposed to have six rows and six columns, right? But not every row and every column has a number. The rows and columns that do not have numbers are actually zeros, are filled up with zeros. So in fact, it's it's a Every row and every column does have a number, except that if the number is zero, then it's not displayed, right? So, 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 so the first row is going to be four minus one, and then zero, zero, zero minus one, right? With all the zeros in between, right? The last if coefficient is minus one. So if you actually do this kind of a matrix vector multiplication with x, then it's four times t one, right? Four times t one, and then it's minus one times t two. It's minus one times t two. That's minus t two, right? And then it's all zeros in the between, right? It's all zeros in between until you get to the last element. That's minus one. So minus one times t six. That's minus t six, right? It's e supposed to equal to like two hundred, right? So 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 we have our linear system solver. The difficulty now is just to, to actually construct this particular matrix, right? So so now let's look at how we can actually construct this matrix in the most efficient way. How we can actually do that, right? How we can actually do that. Um, when we were doing this matrix multiplication stuff, we looked at one particular function that's called a diag, right? If you look at the pattern of the A matrix, on the diagonal, it's all fours, right? And then on the on the on the on the off diagonal, it's minus one, right? So so on the off diagonal. Above the diagonal, it's it's all minus one, right? And then below the diagonal, it's also minus one. And then this this along this particular direction, that's sort of the anti-diagonal, 
It's also O minus 1, right? We looked at the diag function when we were doing matrix operations, the diag function, help diag, right? So this diag function allows us to actually operate on the diagonals. We looked at how to use the diag function to uh, to operate on the on the on the on the diagonal, right? But you can sort of see it also takes a second input here, right? So v is a vector with the n components, is a square matrix of order. This thing, um, and then the second input is what? It's called the case diagonal. What exactly is the case diagonal, right? What exactly is the case diagonal? So so this diagonal, the what the, the the diagonal filled up with fours is called the zeros diagonal. So this one, this this diagonal is called zeros diagonal. And then this particular diagonal that's filled up with minus one is called the first diagonal. It's one so so if we are calling the diag function with the second input, the second input is to, supposed to be one for this particular diagonal. Right? And then this is called minus one's diagonal. Right? So 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 the diag function, the second input to the diag function, uh, here it's giving you an example. So diag v is the same as diag v zero. So which means that I'm operating on the zeros diagonal, right? And then k, when k x is the matrix, uh, the column vector formed from uh, the elements of the k's diagonal, right? So so let's look at how we can actually create a matrix by using this a diagonal, uh, by using this diag function, right? Um, so so the A matrix is supposed to be six rows, six columns, right? It's a six by six, um, six by six um, matrix, right? So on the diagonal, it's gonna be six elements. Here we want a diagonal with six fours, right? Six fours. So let's let's experiment with our construction in the command window first, and then we're gonna write the code in the script, right? So diag. So on the diagonal, we're gonna need six fours. We're gonna use the ones ones matrix, right? Six, uh, six, uh, six rows, one column, and then multiply it with four, or four multiply with uh, ones, right? Right. And then that's on the zeros diagonal. So if I do that, that's gonna be give me a diagonal filled up with fours, right? And this is actually equivalent. If the diagonal is the zeros diagonal, then I don't, I, I can ignore the second second input, right? And then let's try something else, right? Let's try something else. Let's try five ones multiplied with minus one, right? And then this time I'm gonna give the diag function the first input, uh, the second input, right? The second input, I'm gonna set the second input to one, which means that I want to set the first diagonal, which is not the zeros diagonal anymore, but it's the first diagonal, you see? So it's all minus ones, that's on the first diagonal, right? So suppose I actually add these two matrices together. Uh, the first one was uh, uh, was, uh, was 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 this one, right? And then let's add together with diag with with this one. Let me copy and paste it. Right. Let's see what's gonna happen. We're gonna get all the fours here, and then all the minus one here, right? That's already, that's already this particular diagonal and this particular diagonal. We 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 we've got like a two different diagonals already, right? And then let's try to get the get the next one, get the get the diagonal that's below it, right? Below the fours. So how are we gonna do that, right? We're gonna do diag minus one, mu multiply with ones, and then again five ones, right? And then the second input to the diag function this time is gonna be minus one. Right. So now we've got the minus ones that's below all the fours. Right. So so by by applying this diag function and adding uh, adding together the, the the output from the diag function, we were able to actually pretty much create uh, the, the 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 three diagonals in the A matrix. Right. And then the next thing that we have to worry about is this particular anti-diagonal thing. Right. This anti-diagonal thing cannot be constructed by using the diag function. The diag function only for the diagonal that goes this way, from the uh, from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, right? 
But this, this diagonal is sort of from, from the north east corner to, to the southwest corner, right? It's it's not really it's not really the the, the, the conventional understanding about the diagonals, right? Right. But nevertheless, we can still create the, a, a, a diagonal matrix that looks like that, right? How how do we actually do that, right? We we when we were doing matrix operations, we looked at the i function, right? So suppose I do a i six minus one times i six. Yeah, I'm gonna get all the minus ones on the diagonal, right? But that's not the direction that I want. I want all the minus ones to go this way, to go along this particular diagonal, right? So so. So how do I actually do that, right? How do I actually do that? There's another MATLAB function called... There's another MATLAB function... What's actually happening? There's another MATLAB function that's called a flip left-right. Right. Called a flip, flip, that's one word, right? Left, right, L, R. Left, right, and this function. What this function is going to do is that it's going to it's going to mirror image the, this particular matrix along an axis that's sort of in the middle, middle column, right? So it's got six columns. So it's going to flip this particular matrix along an axis that's kind of vertical, and between the third and fourth column. So if I do that, then that's going to give me the correct diagonal. Right, so what I have to do is to actually add this matrix that's constructed by using this flip left right to the three diagonal matrices. Right, and now we we are getting very very close to the matrix that we want. Right, but there are still some small differences, some very small differences. Right, so so there's a minus two here. Right, but what, the value that we really want is actually minus one. Right, so so we have to actually correct these two minus twos to minus one. And how can we do that? Right, how can we actually do that? Let's. Uh, uh, oh. What's actually happening? So. So let me let me. Maybe I should just start writing the script instead of still using the command window. Uh, control C, copy the copy the code, right? Control C, and then let's move on to the script, right? Uh, this example is called what? This example is called uh, temperature in a slab. Temperature in a slab. Temperature in a slab. And then let's just copy that piece of code over, right? Um, and then let's call it A matrix, right? That's our A matrix. But for now, the A matrix is not exactly what we want, right? Because it's got these minus twos here. Right? We have to make uh, change those minus twos into minus ones, right? So how do we actually do that? When we were doing this kind of matrix operation, we we looked at how to actually use conditionals to actually filter or select the elements, right? So if we want to select the elements that's with a value of minus two, all we have to do is to put a conditional here. Let's compare a with minus two, and then use this conditional to index into the a matrix. And then the output of this uh, sort of selection operation of this filtering operation is going to be the, the corresponding elements inside of the inside of the a matrix right that's the that's the elements with the value of minus 2 and then at this point i can set the value to minus 1 right i can set those values to minus 1 right so so if i hold down the control key and execute this part of the code and then let's look at what's actually inside of a right now, now A should, is supposed to have the correct value now, right? It's a four minus one, and then minus one in the last column, right? It's minus one, four minus one, zero minus one, zero. 
zero minus one four minus one, and then zero for the rest, and then zero zero minus one four minus one, zero right zero minus one, zero minus one, four minus one, and then minus one all the zeros and then minus one four right. So now we've got our a matrix, right, and that's um, that's exactly what we wanted. And then the next thing that we need to do is to actually construct our y vector, right? The y vector is uh, relatively straightforward to construct because all the numbers are given. Uh, let's look at the numbers. Uh, 280, 140. And then the next three numbers are like uh, the symmetric thing, right? 280, 200, semicolon, 80, semicolon, 140, semicolon, right? Because it's a quantum vector, right? 280, 140, and then 140, 80, 140, 80, and 200, right? It's a quantum vector, so, so that's, um, and now we can actually solve for x, x is equal to my link solve the A matrix that we have uh, constructed by ourselves, and then the y vector, right? And then, uh, what's actually the next input? Uh, learning rate, right? Let's still give it like a 0 0.01 small number, right? And then number equations, let's give like 10,000 or right? And then uh, our code is done, right? And now let's hold down the control key and uh, execute this code, uh, this part of the code, right? And then let's look at the, the solution, right? So the solution looks like that, right? Um, what's supposed to be the correct solution? Um, let me let me let me let me just uh, grab the correct solution. Um, what's the correct solution? Um, I actually need to find in the textbook actually. Um. But uh, let me see if I can. Oh, it's um, it's not a good idea for me to uh, just download it. And then just open it. So if I can get to a table of content, so I can see the which section is supposed to go. Yeah, yeah, I think I missed it. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't miss it. Then. Yeah, so it's uh, eighty four dot two eight five seven. Let me just blow up the correct solution. Um, eighty four dot two eight five seven, eighty two dot eight five seven one, seventy four dot two twenty eight fifty seven, seventy four dot twenty eight seven. So 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 that's the correct solution, right? And we didn't actually use the MATLAB's uh, linear systems over. We actually wrote the linear systems over by ourselves using the steep DCN algorithm, right? And it looks like it's correct, and it's giving us the correct solution. And we still have like two more examples uh, in our in our exercise, right? So we're gonna leave that for the uh, next video, and uh, after we have uh, finished doing the next two examples. Uh, that's gonna be the end of uh, E3, the, the third exercise, right? Alright.